The small towns of Malden and Pine City are nearly unrecognizable today. Five months ago, hurricane force winds sent the Bab Road wildfire ripping through the area, destroying nearly everything in its path. That is a day my wife and I will never forget. It's just emblazoned in our collective memories. The fire destroyed 85% of the homes in Malden. You're facing the beast and you know that your family is down there and it absolutely is terrifying. Dan Harwood is Malden's interim mayor. On the day of the fire, he was at the fire station filling trucks with water. By the time he arrived, the fire was only a few blocks away. You have the devil himself coming up and you know, the flames were 60, 70, 100 foot high, and the wind was, was 60 plus miles an hour. Harwood and his family made it out safely, along with the rest of Malden and Pine City. But the damage left behind was gut-wrenching. I remember looking into the foundation when I first met you on September 8th, and I was praying to God, where do I even start? One brick at a time one branch at a time. That's been a common thought among families here, moving forward one step at a time. For many families affected by the Bab Road fire, it has not been easy waiting for help to come. Hopefully we'll get some funding and be able to move forward. On February 4th, FEMA finally approved Washington Governor Jay Inslee's request for public assistance in Whitman County, along with nine other counties and two tribes. That will help rebuild infrastructure that was lost, like government buildings, power lines, and roads. We've had folks come in today, and, you know, they've had tears in their eyes. I mean, this is, this is huge. But the joy from this good news did not last long. Only a few days later, FEMA denied the state's request for individual assistance in Whitman County which would have given grant money to help families rebuild their home or use for a down payment. Malden has been kind of slapped in the face with this, and that's the way I feel. FEMA said the Bab Road fire impact was not severe enough to warrant individual assistance. What do you say to these victims who say FEMA is letting them down after Washington's worst wildfire season in history? Well, I, I, I would say that um, uh, the damages that were were uh, were sustained are, were incredible, and and our hearts go out to the to the folks who were affected by this. Um, ultimately, uh, the insurance is going to be the best solution for recovery. Mayor Harwood says 60 percent of people who lost their homes in the Bab Road fire had no insurance or not enough. But FEMA told me individual assistance is only made available when the damage is so severe and widespread that the state and local agencies cannot meet residents' needs. For example, individual assistance was approved for eight counties in Oregon after the 2020 wildfire season, but none in Washington. In 2014, it was also approved after the Oso landslide on the west side killed 43 people and destroyed 40 homes. In Malden, there were 121 homes destroyed by the fire. That's that's about 80 more homes destroyed in Malden compared to Oso. So I guess, can you explain that inconsistency for approval of the individual assistance? First of all, we don't look at or compare one disaster to another. We, we, we always evaluate the damages that occurred in this particular event. Well, we do look at the concentration of damages, as you had indicated. Uh, we look at casualties. If, if that happened, we looked at uh, the insurance and the availability of uh, additional resources. So the Malden and Pine City communities are now moving forward with assistance from the SBA. But perhaps most of all, they are relying on each other with small acts of kindness that are having a big impact. In fact, as I walked through the heart of Malden with Mayor Harwood, a couple from out of town drove up alongside us with an unexpected delivery, some Oreos and a $1,200 check. Hope that helps you out a little bit. It absolutely it does. Thank you very much. There's not enough ways in the world that I can say how humble we are that people have taken the time to bring us Oreos in an envelope 
This was not the first and surely will not be the last show of support here. But as Malden and Pine City work to rebuild, they know the community will rise again. Out of the ashes comes the phoenix. Well, our Malden is, is our phoenix. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. The trees here in Malden that are not marked with pink tape are going to get cut down. That's because they pose safety and health risks. Now the rule of thumb, if a tree doesn't show any green, it's dead. But in the case of this tree, it still has some green on the top, so it has a chance of recovering from the fire. Clearing away these dead trees must happen first before Malden can take any other major steps forward. That is why the disaster relief nonprofit Team Rubicon is here. We're here to help the city of Malden um, hopefully recover and start rebuilding. The group is spending the next week cutting and clearing away about 1,000 dead trees identified on Malden public properties. Lead Sawyer Brittany Ryan says removing them is crucial to the town's safety. If we leave the trees that are dead with that are completely brown, they'll just um, basically get to the point where they're a hazard and falling on things and causing more damage for this town. Mayor Dan Woodward believes removing trees that burned in the Bab Road fire is an obvious way to see progress in Malden. Ryan told me she is proud to be part of that progress. I hope by removing these trees, they can see a little bit of growth coming back. And then we're going to start focusing on some of their recreational trails. So this way it will hopefully bring people back into the area and they'll be able to keep growing and doing what they need to do for this area. About a thousand more scorched trees on private Malden properties still need to be removed. Residents can sign up for Team Rubicon services by messaging the Pine Creek Community Restoration Facebook page. I hope that they see a future for them again and can actually start to see their homes hopefully being rebuilt again and hopefully just bring uh, a view to the future. Our positive aspect that we bring to this, I hope it spreads to them. Hope spreads in different ways. This week in Malden, it's spreading one tree at a time. In Malden, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. Part of the rebuilding is to re-landscape, re to, to show care and attention and bring beauty back into the landscape. Yeah, do you want to help me carry this over there? So one of our residents reached out to them because she saw the giveaway in Spokane and said, Malden needs trees, they burn. Well, and they said, yeah, we have a bunch of trees, we'd love to have them come out. They slated 500 trees for us. They're going to adapt after one summer. I'm an arborist that works with trees, but my real interest is working with people. Think about where you want to put them. I look at it as sort of a rebirth. Take as many as you want. It's a small start, but from small things, great things happen, and this is a start. That's a gardener's heart right there. Tree people love to see trees planted, so yeah, just that he was excited to be able to participate and bring them out for us. We had one gentleman today said he was in Spokane looking for trees, and it's not just the cost, it's the availability. There's such a shortage of stuff, so having so many trees brought down and just be available has just been a blessing. For what they went through and how upbeat they are, Thank you. it makes me really happy trees are a good thing you know they're just they're a symbol of our desire to stay and rebuild because you have to make that commitment to grow a tree my dad was a logger and he had a sawmill and you know and so I love trees that's why I moved to this valley this is because it had a lot of trees <laughs> I had a 72 foot trailer house here that was my storage my son had a house just on the other side of those uh, two knolls he lost everything. We've just here in the last month just kind of started pulling out of a deep hole of depression. You put a little bit in there, honey, and I was just so delighted to see that they had trees. Dig, dig, dig. I really appreciate it. To go out and have to buy a tree to put in the ground is just sometimes more than you have the money for. They're not cheap. <laughs> Scooping chocolate, huh? Part of that mental thing, you know, got to have something new growing, something, you know, something doing something. <laughs> Okay, that's good. New growth is always a wonderful thing. Okay, put your tree in, Draven. Nine one one, location of your emergency. Yes, we got a fire on Bab Road and Moore Road. 
Okay, yeah, we have help headed that direction. Is it threatening anything? It will be. Are you reporting the bad road fire? It has jumped the road and heading to Malden, and there is nobody uh, down there. We have uh, Whitman County and Spokane County headed that way. There's a big forest fire that started right behind my place. Are you in Spokane County? Yes, this is just starting and it's really bad. The flames are shooting up and into the trees. Well, we'll go ahead and get both Rosalia and Spokane out there, okay? All right, you're going to need them. Welcome back and thank you for joining us here in our five o'clock show. As you know, 2020 was by far one of the worst wildfire seasons we have seen here across Washington. In fact, on Labor Day alone last year, 39 fires were burning across our state. Once those fires got started, many of them did not stop. And in the span of just 36 hours, beginning on September 7th, more than 500,000 acres burned all across the state of Washington. Now in Whitman County, what would eventually become known as the Bab Road Fire claimed a total of 23 homes, businesses, barns, and other structures. 67 homes in Malden and 13 in Pine City were lost. But it was wasn't the only tragic fire in the state that month. In fact, in Okanagan County, the Cold Springs and Pearl Hill fires were also burning. In fact, in that one, a family was caught in that fire. It ultimately killed one child and seriously injured both of his parents. And after the Bab Road fire devastated the communities here in uh, Whitman County, when we talk about Malden and Pine City, in the days after that fire, there was a complete outpouring of support from many people across the state and across the country for all of those people who had lost their homes and everything in it. We're joined now by Krem 2's Amanda Rowley, who again was one of the first reporters on the scene here that day after the fire came through. Amanda, I know you spoke with many of the volunteers who came in just to help the people who lost everything in that fire. Well, Whitney, every month, if not every week since the Bab fire, we have seen positive changes here in Malden and Pine City. The rubble where the post office once was is gone, as well as the debris with the building next door, right across the street from the post office. Dead trees are now cut down and homes are now being rebuilt. It's not a fast process, but the community has accomplished a lot this past year. There is a total of seven homes rebuilt since last year. Volunteers built two of them. Even Malden's temporary city hall, library, and food bank are all in operation. Now, Rachel Blakely with the Long Term Recovery Group expects more homes will be rebuilt even faster this fall. This year, we've been doing all that behind the scenes work that you don't really see. This year, you're going to see homes coming up. And there might be a point when it looks like they're popping up like weeds because we have so many potential volunteer built homes that every time we get one that works well, more people want to say, let's, we'll build a home, you know? So I think this next year is going to feel more productive because we're going to see a lot more people back into structures, not RVs. Now, Rachel told me she it feels really good to be able to drive into town and not feel like it's a war zone. She attributes this all to the rubble and debris getting cleared away, and that's all thanks to the efforts of volunteer groups and residents. Well, tonight we have special coverage of the anniversary of the Bab Road fire. Our own Whitney Ward joins us live from Malden, Washington. On this day, one year ago, a wildfire destroyed the towns of Malden and Pine City in just a few hours. Wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour sent the fire racing across 15,000 acres, destroying everything in its path. Yeah, Tom, when our crews arrived here in Malden, the night of Labor Day, all that was left here was a pile of fallen bricks from what used to be the post office and the flagpole for the town's fire station. And by the time that day was over, what would become known as the Bab Road Fire had leveled more than 200 homes and buildings. And now it is one year later. We know that this town of Malden, as well as the neighboring town of Pine City, they are working hard to continue rebuilding one day at a time. On this one year anniversary, as we take a look back, we go back to where it all began with Creme 2's Amanda Rowley at Bab Road. Wind, trees, and power lines. 
Each of these on their own are generally harmless. Together, they can wipe out 85% of a town. On Labor Day last year, they did. It was just a shock at how much and how fast. I mean, within two hours, I mean, the, just the path of destruction within two hours was just amazing. Clint Myers spent the early part of that day harvesting spring wheat about five miles away from where the fire started. Just before noon, he saw what was brewing off Bab Road. Like the roaring sound of the fire, just like a low rumble, you know, as it as it moved on. Because we were fairly close, it just, it, it, it's a distinct sound. Wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour pushed the Bab fire across 15,000 acres. You can hear the panic in the 911 calls. Uh, the flame was shooting up and into the trees. So it's heading toward my house. It's heading to the east. We started getting texts from people asking if we were cutting in that area. Um, did we start a fire? So then we shut down. By the time we got here, it was pretty much starting to really pick up the wind and the fire. That's when he realized that roaring fire started just feet from his crops. As it grew, so did the numb feeling inside of Myers. But anytime you're seeing your crops burn, is just kind of a numb feeling when you can't do anything about it. From where we were down in this area, there wasn't anything that we could do. It was just too dangerous. He lost about 60 acres of malt barley in the fire. It was insured, not a big deal. Uh, lots of people lost a lot more than we did. It has jumped the road and heading to Malden, and there is nobody uh, down there. The town of Malden and Pine City lost 120 homes and 100 other buildings that day. In the early stages of the Bab fire, witnesses who live across these fields reported fire and smoke about 40 feet in size at the base of these trees heading south up these hills. Now the Washington Department of Natural Resources started its investigation at this tree. DNR's report blames this damaged ponderosa pine next to Myers land. It says the fire started after a branch fell on an Avista power line during high winds. It does not specifically blame Avista for not inspecting or removing it, but it does say closer inspection of the tree was warranted. The power company says the cause of the fire was extraordinary wind conditions. It also claims the ponderosa pine was located outside of the power company's right of way. Three days after the fire, Myers searched for perspective of the damage and captured these images from his plane. A year later, back where it all started, Myers is still trying to make sense of what happened. Things were cleared pretty well in this area. It wasn't like they had been neglected. It's just, it's a big tree, high winds. I mean, it, it, it it was easy for it to hit it, you know. Wind, trees, and power lines, all harmless ingredients that make a recipe for an unforgettable disaster. Well, it was really eye-opening to be able to go right to where that fire started and see just the destruction it caused. And Whitney, we knew the wind was going to be rough yeah. that day. We had the warnings, but had no idea the type of damage that wind was going to cause with the Bab fire. Just one little spark. I know that you touched on it in your story there, but you talked to those witnesses who really did see it when it was small before it really became that huge monster that destroyed these towns. Yeah, we tried to track down Bill Widman. He is that witness that lived across those fields, mm -hmm. literally in his backyard. He didn't talk to us on camera, but he says, wow, had no idea what was going on in my backyard. His neighbor that lived next to him is the one that knocked on his door and said, hey, this, this could blow our direction. So there was a bit of a fear that the wind typically goes the other direction in the southern wind, but that day it was an unusual direction. So it was really, really powerful to hear his thoughts about it. He shared with me a photo of the day after the fire tweeted it out. It's really cool to see just where that power line was in relation to the fire. Of course, it's chopped down now. You saw it in the story, but yeah, really powerful hearing his account of, of what happened. I know that he is one of many, many people that you have mm -hmm. talked to over the last yeah. year as you have done just your incredible coverage of the aftermath of this fire. What has it been like to kind of see what it was that 
night when you came through as the first news reporter who was allowed back in after those roads had been closed to where we are today. Well, I remember the Whitman County Sheriff's deputies that were there. They they said we want you to show people what it looks like here. And so I'm grateful to them for trusting us to tell that story. This is the intersection we were at. This is the this is where the post office was. It's been cleared out now, but it looked like a war zone. I'd never seen anything like that before. And it was still amazing to see the flag and the flagpole still yeah. standing. That's kind of been a symbolic uh, image for the whole community just moving forward. But man, I remember the wind was still howling. All we could see were the, the fire truck lights on and just wind kicking up all the dust. And, and there were still flames. I mean, they still were putting things out. So it was just incredible. I mean, the amount of damage it did in such a little bit of time. And you know, we're standing here, this pile of rubble behind us is one of the few that remain. Yeah. There's been a remarkable amount of progress in the last year. Yes, I mean, a lot of positive change, right? Some of the residents have told me getting the post office cleared out, that that's a scar that needed to happen yeah. soon so they could move on. I mean, that was an iconic image that we all saw and remember. So it's gone, the building across the street is gone, uh, cleared out. The church is rebuilt or rather fixed. The whole side was melted off. So it's really neat to see just how far people have come. Buildings, homes have been rebuilt oh, yeah. and it's just, it's great to see. They're making progress every day. And I've said before, every day, every month we come back, it's something different. It's really, really great to see. I know you'll be there covering it as yeah. it continues as well. Thank you very much for Thanks. your incredible coverage. And also to mark this devastating day, the towns have been doing what they have been trying as much as they can over the past year. They certainly came together as a community to try and celebrate all that they have accomplished in the wake of that fire. Earlier today, I also spoke to the Malden mayor, Dan Harwood. He expressed his gratitude to all who have supported Malden one day at a time. I, I understand that some of those families who did lose their homes still are not yet in a permanent home. Is no. that correct? There is approximately 23 uh, people that are families that are in, in RVs. And, you know, you think about that RVs are for recreation. And, you know, you think about it, we did not lose a person. No one died because of this okay. fire. That's because, you know, we had some higher powers looking out for us. But you stop and think about it, and I worry about it nightly, is what happens now mm -hmm. if someone perishes in their RV? My worst nightmare, it would crush me yeah. to have that event. Um, there's not a fire truck in the country that could get to our, our residents uh, fast enough to put out a fire. Yeah. Uh, Has the response that you've gotten though um, kind of been a testament to, the, to the, the power of community and what we can do together? Absolutely. Together we can make our recovery and it's a marathon. It's not yes. a sprint. Yeah. And if I could wave a wand and put 23 new houses here, I would do it in a heartbeat. I know you would. We thank the mayor for taking the time to talk with us. We know that this has certainly been a very hard year for him and everyone here in Malden. We have a lot more coverage from Malden still to come tonight, but if you'd like to take a look at the many stories that we have done, all of our Malden coverage, you can just text the word Malden to 509-448-2000. For now, we're going to send things back to Tom and Mark in the studio.